long time to see, man. How, how are you doing? Everything's good, man. How you doing? I'm just great, thanks. Uh, like I said, we were chatting before. I got a huge weekend uh, ahead of me. So uh, after this, I actually have to head down to uh, my hometown and and get a couple of things sorted out. And I've got a wedding <laughs> rehearsal I got to go to tonight. So busy, busy weekend for me. And then I start training on uh, on Sunday. So busy week. How about you? How, what, what's your weekend looking like? Oh, uh, yeah, man. Today is my first day off here in a little while. So it's, it's been a minute. Uh, I got to work out in the morning and, and little things like that, man. But uh, as far as training goes today, I'm off. So I'm having a good time relaxing. There you go. I mean, that's just kind of how camp goes, right? Oh, yeah, man. You, you build up and, you know, that one day makes all the difference in the world for sure. 100%. So I know like a couple of fighters I've talked to in the past, they, they said like, it's almost like a reverse kind of feeling like they, they feel like they can't relax. Is that ever been an issue for you? Yeah, man. I think it comes with experience. Um, I think rest can do just as much for you as going out there and killing yourself on the mats, man. And I think every fighter knows when to take that day. And uh, I think it's important. Yeah. And I feel like sometimes like to compare, I like, I don't obviously fight, but like, uh, training when I, when I want to do the bodybuilding, it's, uh, for me, like when I have my days off, it's like a reverse effect. I feel like I don't want to rest. I just want to keep going, 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 but I know when I do need to take that time off. So I hear what you're saying. Yeah, I agree with all that, man. Uh, I think it's important and I don't know, I don't think you're doing yourself any favors, you know, when you're killing your body, I think there's a time and a place for, for rest and to push too. So it goes both ways. Absolutely. So, um, last time I think we were chatting, you had a fight booked prior, I think it was Luke Saunders. And then, um, and then obviously you had another fight booked that obviously fell through and now you have this other fight booked now. So it's been a couple of months in between. Uh, have you been able to enjoy the summer at all? What, what have you been able to do for fun? Oh yeah, man. We've, uh, we've had a good time. We got a lake pretty close to here about an hour and a half away, Kentucky Lake. So we'll go and we'll rent the boat for uh, the weekend or for even, you know, eight hours or something like that. And uh, we've been trying to stay outside as much as possible, man. The winter's going to be coming and, uh, you know, you got to enjoy the outdoors while you can. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that you're down in the South. So that being said, like for us, it's been like in Ontario, Canada, it has been a hot summer. Like we even had a summer like this. It's been the humidity is so high. Um, but obviously in the, out in the South, I mean, in, in America, like it doesn't like, you know, heat is, from, you know, it's nothing new for you guys. So has it been higher than usual or has it been kind of the same? Uh, I think it's been around the same. We've been in the high nineties. Um, yeah. the, the new gym that we're actually at, it gets really humid in there, man. There's no AC. So that that's been a little different, you know, it's getting in the, 105 110 in there it feels like so i mean it has been a little different as far as the training is concerned in the heat well i guess you wouldn't really have any problem dropping water weight that in that sense would you oh no man puddles everywhere it's just hard to stand up some days <laughs> yeah i mean i guess you would have to have someone be clean up those mats somebody's gonna slip and fall so <laughs> <laughs> for sure man it gets a little crazy in there Mm -hmm. so that being said um i know this has kind of been a busy week i think for combat sports you know you've had pfl last night you know you get bellator tonight um did you have any chance to watch the pfl last night and what were your thoughts uh i got to see where kayla harrison won uh i didn't get a chance to watch it i was actually at the gym while it was going on so i haven't been able to stay as tuned in as i like to be uh like you said man the week's been really hectic i've been training every day twice a day so i really haven't been able to keep up the way i'd like to and uh, since you got to see that fight, what do you think about Kayla Harrison's performance and how do you see her career um, taking off in the future? Yeah, man, I think she's really good. I, I think she's talented. Uh, I think some people look down on the other organizations. If you're not in the UFC, maybe you're not the, a top level fighter. I, I don't think that at all. Um, I know she's probably going to have to come down and wait a little bit. I know she fights at a higher weight class than, than some of the bigger organizations let you. Uh, but man, I think she's skilled, uh, her takedowns, her submissions. I think she's a physically strong, you know, woman. Uh, I think she could do well in the UFC and uh, I think she's doing well now. I would be really interested to see her, um, strike with someone, uh, with a little bit more power, you know, no, no disrespect to any of the women that she's fought and they're all killers. Um, but I like to kind of see how would she, she'd be able to take a shot from someone like Nunes or someone like Cyborg to have, because I mean, you can be. You know, you can knock everyone out, you can submit everyone, but it kind of takes it 
takes a fighter to be able to take a good shot as well. You know, you can't fight everybody and be able to be dominant. You have to be able to be, take a little bit of that adversity as well. Yeah. I think I seen an article. I, I couldn't tell you where I'd seen it at, but um, her being an American top team and getting some rounds in with Amanda Nunes and from what the article said, man, you know, it's hearsay at this point, but uh, she was doing well. So I, I think she can compete with those people. Yeah, and I know that they are teammates, so it'll be interesting to see. I know there's controversy between um, when you're sparring versus when you're fighting. It doesn't always translate into a real fight, but if she's able to hang in there, I think she really has a great future ahead of her, uh, especially with her judo credentials. I think that she's got – I think if she doesn't stay in PFL forever and she wants to go to Bellator, uh, UFC sign um, with big organizations like that. I think she she'll have no problem. Uh, it's just going to be that weight cutting, I think, and we'll see her cutting a little bit of that weight and see how she's going to look after that. I think I seen something earlier today. Cyborg coming up to one fifty five or so. Said she'd be willing to fight her at fifty five. So I mean, that could be some. That'd be a good fight to set up too. I think that'd go well for Kayla to get a big win on her resume too. So I think that's something that could be looked into. I think it would be a great fight for both of them. I think because it would give cyborg a good fight and if cyborg were to beat her i mean that you know that's kind of doing her a solid as well so it, it kind of i think it goes both ways yeah I, I agree with that man no no argument here but uh, enough about that i want to talk about you here now so um you know you had that fight with tony uh gravely gravely uh booked a while back obviously it, it fell through and now you have a rebooked again so i know that sometimes the ufc when fights fall through they just give them a different opponent and then they you never see the people fight or you never see the, the guys fight again so did the ufc really want to push for this fight or is this something that you and your team were looking for yeah man they they contacted us about it um you know sean shelby sent my manager you know the email would hey would you like to have this fight rebooked uh, i think it's a fight that they're interested in um, it's a good stylistic matchup. Like, you know, I like to meet in the middle. I like to throw hands. Tony is a, a great wrestler, man. You know, no disrespect or anything like that. We have different styles. Uh, I think it's going to be interesting. And I think the UFC wants to see, you know, whose style prevails and uh, who's ready to take that next step. Yeah. And I think you do have to have those two prospects to really, it's almost like, um, almost like a tournament, a little mini, mini tournament itself, just kind of see who's going to take that next leap into the top 15 or top 10, et cetera, et cetera, I think. And the, the division's so stacked, man. I don't think you can put on a bad fight. Uh, you know, you can call anybody from 1 to 30, and you're going to have a competitive fight, I think. Well, and, and that's it. And when I look at your division, there's a lot of guys in there that really are in the mix. Like, there's you, Yanis, I mean, Gravely. I mean, I would say Sugar Sean. Like, I know he kind of had a bit of an edge at going at the number, maybe number 12 spot. But there's a, there's a few of you there that are just in that little mix where it's like you're just getting into that top 15. And it's exciting to really see that division unfold. Yeah, I agree, man. Uh, I think we're all trying to get that Sean O'Malley fight. He's trying to fight unranked guys. We're all here for it. Uh, Giannis, like you said, man, he looked great in his fight with Costa. Costa looked good, too. I mean, I, I think you can't really discredit him that first round with something else. Uh, you got guys like Nathaniel Wood who haven't fought in a minute but are still really talented guys. Uh, the, you can just name off anybody, man, and they're, they're all really good. Absolutely. And, you know, talking about your opponent, Tony, I mean, his only – his only recent loss was uh, against Brett Johns. Besides, I, you know, he's been on a tear. So what are you expecting to see from it? Are you expecting a stand-up war? What, what is going to happen in this fight? I definitely think he's been working on his stand-up. Uh, I can see it progress, you know, watching film. Uh, I'm sure that has a lot to do with being down there at ATT and they're working on his weaknesses. And, <clears throat> you know, he, he just got a knockout, you know, his last fight against Anthony Burchick in April. Uh, I don't think you can just go in there and say, hey, man, I'm definitely going to touch this guy up and, making panic shoot on me the whole time. I don't, I don't think that's the case. I think he has a, a lot of different ways that he can approach this fight. Uh, I think when he does get tagged, he's definitely going to go back to what he knows best, and he is going to shoot in this fight. I think he's going to shoot in this fight a lot. And um, I have nothing bad to say about Tony. Uh, he gives up his back a lot. Uh, he does get submitted. Uh, my last win was a submission, rear naked choke. Uh, same thing Brett Johns got him with. Uh, so there's definitely a lot of ways for me to win this fight. There's a lot of ways for him to approach this fight. And uh, it's just important to be ready for everything at this point, man. Right. And I mean, <clears throat> from, from what I hear you saying, like you have a lot of respect for this guy and uh, you know, you're, you're not overlooking him. I, 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 this is what I'm gathering from you. So that being said, what separates you from the rest of his uh, recent opponents? What separates me, man? Um, 
I think Tony comes and he's he's tough and he's hard nosed and I think I can match him in that. I, I'm cool with meeting in the middle. I'm cool with the grinding out pace, kind of like how me and Johnny Munoz our fight went. Mm-hmm. I, I'm okay in all those situations and scenarios. Uh, I think I'm willing to meet him wherever he wants to take the fight, and I plan on being better wherever we meet. And I, I mean, we everyone says that man, and it's it's only up to us to go in there and actually perform that night. You know, the training is the training, but performing. Once the lights come on, me and everything, and uh, I think I'm ready for that stage, and I know he is, and I just want a really good fight. Excellent. And I know I would never ask you to look over, overlook a fighter, but um, you know, in the future, I know that there was talks of you know you wanted that Adrian Yanez fight, maybe another guy like that. Is that fight still interest you? Are your more, or is your looks more towards the horizon, towards that top fifteen? Yeah, man, I'm I'm interested in exciting fights. Uh, I think the top 15 will come when it comes. Adrian Yanez is definitely an exciting fight. He has a fan base. He's uh, he's fun to watch. I like to sit and watch him, man. I, I enjoyed the the him and Costa fight. Uh, both guys throwing, man. I, I enjoy watching those guys. Uh, Sean O'Malley is always someone we all want to fight. Um, a new one that I've been thinking about, Chris Motino. Uh, he's a banger. You know, he's got a really good chin. Yeah. I think me and him meeting in the middle has fight of the night written all over it. Uh, you really just can't go wrong, man. And, you know, like looking at a guy like him, you know, I think, I don't know if you ever heard about it, but like, he only has so many, I mean, followers is whatever. I mean, you're a fighter, you're not an Instagram, you know, you're not a, you're not a a social media person, you know, you're a fighter. Right. But like looking at his followers on Instagram, I saw that, you know, he only had a couple thousand. Then after, after that fight, he shot up to like 50, 50, 50,000 followers. So um, that being said, I mean, do you think as much as, you know, I think it's, it's, you know, I think it's clear to see that he got outclassed for sure. Um, but him being able to stay in there and just take those shots, like from someone like Sean O'Malley, I mean, do you think that he has a bright future in the UFC? Man, it's hard to say. He's tough. He's exciting. And I think that's going to go a long way with the UFC too. If you're going to lose fights, you better do it in an exciting fashion. Um, I think he could have maybe had a little bit more offense. I think that's where me and him differentiate a little bit. I think I, I throw a little bit more power than he has. I think I could have put O'Malley in at least some dangerous positions. Uh, when I come forward, you know, I'm going to throw hard. Um, but, yeah, man, I, I, I thought he looked okay. I, he took it on short notice, too, and it is Sean O'Malley. The guy's no scrub. No matter what anybody wants to say about him, his stand-up is very smooth. He has all the confidence in the world. Uh, I, I enjoyed the fight, and I think the UFC probably enjoyed the fight, too. I, I think he's going to get a few more opportunities. Excellent. And lastly for you, I mean – um, depending on how this fight kind of turns out, um, you know, we're, we're pretty much at the end of August here. So are you kind of looking towards having one more fight by the end of the year? What is your plans for the rest of 2021? Yeah, I'd like to fight uh, late November, or early December, somewhere in there. You know, if everything's healthy and, you know, we're feeling good, I'd definitely like to get in there one more time and kind of start fresh from the injuries next year and uh, make that big push. Excellent. Well, thank you for taking your time to come on the podcast here and uh, good luck in your next fight. Thank you, man. I appreciate it.